Hi, this is the Social Jello with Angelo show. My name's Angelo. I'm a social scientist, surfer, martial artist, and a whole lot of other things. Coming to you live from Kasai City, Japan, the Social Jello with Angelo show. What's up? And welcome to Social Jello with Angelo. Today I'm here with Nelson Pinto. And I verified the name two times, so I don't have to go through that spiel again. Nelson, thank you very much for being on the show. Uh, a quick side note before we start talking with Nelson again, conversations with a back fist. That's the tagline of the show. If you've been following the show, thank you very much. It's if this is your first show, this show is about psychology and martial arts. Um, Nelson, I bumped into you. Well, I didn't bump into you. I met you online, like I do many of my guests, and you're actually a friend of of Renato Bernardino. Uh, why did I have to mess up another name? But here, I'm sure he'll listen to this. That's not my name. <laughs> but yeah, hopefully Let's it is. Let's go, I see for Renato. <laughs> so, and uh, who's, a, who's a Kaja Kembo instructor coming out of, um, he's in France, but he's originally from Portugal. Um, yeah. So yeah, I met, I met, I kind of met him virtually through, I met you through him virtually. And uh, I've been following your page. You are involved in a lot of martial arts, uh, just from what I've seen on Facebook, FMA, um, some Korean martial arts. You also have a lot of ties to Kaju Kembo guys. So for you, Kaju Kembo people listening, um, he is involved because he does a lot of seminar work. But before we get started with where you are today, um, my first question that I, that I, I like to explain people's journeys how did you get into martial arts? What got you started? So before I start, thank you so much for this opportunity. It's a big honor for me. I, uh, I always enjoy to share my humble journey. Um, I, I see myself a lot. I am yeah, master this, that. In the end, I'm a student. Um, I always say that my name is Nelson and I have a problem because I'm a martial arts holic, right? <laughs> you know, because uh, for me, it's, uh, I, when I say I love martial arts, I love all of them. From internal arts, Tai Chi, to the Muay Thai. And I've been training in all, and before even grappling, and, and in some other ones, I'm not doing so much. You know what? I'm going to my, it's, I'm, I'm on my 40s on the way to, to 50, by the way. Uh, and, you know, I have my damage, right? But I did a lot of competition and uh, from Muay Thai, kickboxing, soft contact, light contact, breaking, katas, freestyle, weapons, stick fighting that I still go stick and knife fighting every year. And I just a few a few months ago, I was with the Dog Brothers guy and in December, I'll be again with a few of you, all friendly with, with some more control, but we, I did some full contact and, and I, I keep, I keep going, you know, and in, with people with the same mindset, not big ego. Um, so I just want to say on this, that for me, mar all martial, I love all martial arts. And I don't think I, I like from, I, we need all distance for the street. So that's how I believe it. But healing arts i'm a massage therapist so I, I love massage therapy i love to learn about the compuncture and reiki i'm certified sacral cranial therapy um i think i, I like the war the scholar warrior mentality that you know how to heal and how to kill right and then how to kill between lines but you are in, in the middle and you, you become that, that samurai or you become that warang like in Korean art or you get the Shaolin in Chinese martial arts, whatever you want to call. And for me, it's value in all of them. And sometimes it's, it's difficult because I, I wish I have like 1000 years so I may be able to learn with everybody. But it comes a point in life, like now I see my way going to 50 and it's hey. I need to reduce and become good in what I have. But if I was able, I would learn that one and that one and that one. Going back uh, and back, uh, I was born in Manhattan in Greenwich Village, New York. My parents were Portuguese. Uh, my family immigrated here for 50, 50 years ago, around 50, 60 to East Coast. 
my father was able to be very successful. And uh, in 83, he decided to go back to Portugal. He wanted that Mediterranean life. And like Portugal is like, I think Portugal is like Italians and the Greeks and the Span Spaniards. We're all the same. I think Portuguese are the more mellow. And the more you go to the sea, to the Atlantic, more mellow. And that's why I can see that Portuguese and Hawaii mentality, the same thing. That's why a lot of Portuguese, like they call, when I went to Hawaii, it was funny that everybody knew it was Portuguese people. And you will see that all Portuguese are by the coast. They are in East Coast. They go to Florida, but they don't go inside inland. In history, it's funny that that happened. That's why Portuguese lost a lot of their, they conquered half the world, but they always have, they stay by the coast. They never go inland. So British and others were able to conquer because they never went to inland. So it was, anyway, going back. Um, so I moved to Portugal. Uh, of course, my first language was English. I have to learn Portuguese and, uh, and you know, and it, for me, it was uh, a blessing to have these roots uh, be, you go to school in Portugal and have other family there. So I'm like 50-50. Well, I have more family from my, so if I talk about my mom, mom's side, it's all here. My parents' side, my father's side, it's 90%. And then I have like 10%. Then my wife have everybody there, right, in, in Europe. So I start class, I start martial arts around 15, 16. I think it was 15 and then a month later, 16. And that was 1993. In fact, I was looking, I was two days ago, I was looking for my Taekwondo and Karate Shotokan and Aikido because it, even that time I'll be training several arts, but I don't tell my teachers because like, like 30 years ago and the mentality in Portugal you have to see in that time the 90s was like the 70s in United States you know it, I was 15 years old they they beat the shit of me you know I will go to that was talking with friends of mine 50s and will have eyes my mom will have eyes and I'm 15 years old with 30 40 guys beating me up so um it was it was very hard training things change a lot and why why did you do it like what what made you at 15 why yeah. did you decide to start training i um i love mr miyagi the character i know it was a fictitious but i uh it was something so as a kid i don't went because of the oh i love the technique and i'm gonna the technique i'm saying not the the karate kid i think it's a great movie but technically, we all know. But but is but is a classic, and I, I think it's missing a lot that in today times. That is the martial artist, the respect that is between teacher and student. And, 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 and I'm just gonna just to let the listeners know what's going on. Um, I'm sure most of you. I'm gonna say no. What the Karate Kid is, if you're my age, but for you new gen folk. That are watching YouTube and stuff. Uh, Cobra Kai. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, if you've been watching Cobra Kai uh, and you haven't seen Karate Kid, I highly suggest you do. <laughs> it's a spin-off. Cobra Kai is a spin-off. Cobra Kai is a spin-off for you, for you youngins. All right. All right good. Go ahead and continue. But, Sorry. But, but uh, when, I, when I went, I loved Mr. Miyagi. You know, I initially, when I, I want to be, what was the passion I have was the character, you know, for example, when they destroyed the bonsais and he decided to go fishing, right? And I'm not saying that you just go des destroy your home and you go fishing, but but I like, looked for that peace of mind that you have. And it's funny that even today times now that I'm aging, I'm going back to be minimalist in my life in many ways. And, but also the money is not important for me. It's the quality of life, right? It is important. I'm not going to lie about it. We need money, pay bills, normal thing. It's economy. But but it's a quality of life and family in France. And I think being outside from Portugal, the way that I'm so family-oriented and now United States, other world, I give value for what I had and what I don't have here in the type of society. But anyway, I... I loved Mr. Miyagi and, you know, eventually you always come Van Damme and all the other guys, but it was Mr. Miyagi that I want to be, 
I want to be like Mr. Miyagi. I want to conquer that center and that peace. And then so I looked for a class and I was waiting for a friend, 15, 15 years old, and I'm waiting for him. And he said, oh, next month, next month. And I was like, no. So I bought a Tegi, Karate Gi. And I just, I, I went to the class. I talked with the sensei. And I asked him, Sensei PT, that I want to do the class. I said, you don't want to try? He said, no, I want to learn martial arts. I, I know what I want. And in that time, you have to see that today time is a really brotherhood, right? You, you talk with your students with the white belt. At least my, my teachers are like that, the ones I have now. We, you still have the hierarchy and bowing and the respect. But, you know, Grandmaster Diablo, like for example, my top teacher is like a father. He will talk with everybody from the white belt to black belt. Everybody is accessible to him. You know, even if he's a very traditional way, we bow to him and everything, but he, you know, he will tell a joke. And so it's, I like that mellow, but during my first years um, that I trained several martial arts, everything was very rigid, right? And that time the training was rich. I, I remember being 16 years old and we have these pine wood boards like this, not the ones like this that we almost can bite and break today times. And uh, now some break it and boom. So yeah, today times my hand, this one is like this. Look, this one I will not open because of all break. And then I was also third world champion, third place. And I won the first place in Taekwondo in Portugal. And I was a green belt and the others were fourth degree black belts. I, they lost against me. But anyway, long story. So, but the training was very hard, breaking tiles and boards. And, you know, today times, I think we need balance that take care of being smart in your training. And that's what I want to my students. Conditioning, I think that we lost a lot of the conditioning, I think is important, but be smart, right? But anyway, you know, I'm 15, 16 years old and these guys are beating me up. I remember I will go home and I, it's like, I'm, I'm trying not to cry, right? Because my father is picking me up. And the training, you, I will go two days in one place, two days in the other, right? And when I got my driving license, oh my God, I will train four or five days, six, every day go train. And we'll not, it's no one hour class. I'll be there three hours at least, because even after I'll be there before training, during the class that was not one hour, it will be 90 minutes, two hours. And then I will stay one hour later. The doll, the doll box or the karate is it depends if he's Korean because I was between Korean and Japanese styles and then finally Thai styles and Western because I went boxing. So to kind um, of clear this up, what was the first style at 15? I started with karate Shotokan. Okay, Shotokan karate. And then karate Shotokan. And then I went to I need I I uh, I want to learn boxing in Muay Thai. And this teacher, Carlos Pedro, my teacher in Portugal, is still a good friend of mine. And he, he gave up from Taekwondo. He went to the Muay Thai Boran, Kravi Krabong. He's been in Thailand. He's, he's probably, uh, he, he wasn't really, his training, I will have to tell him, is the most, it's one of the more tough guys I met in life. Because I saw him winning and losing in front of me. But he never let his ego, right? We, we, I remember we go fight. We went to fight Campo guys, Cocho Rio, and there was other people. We went to Spain, and he's on my corner, and then he will switch. I will be in his corner. He's going to go fight. The other teacher will stay, but he, he will be fighting all the time, and he's learning kickboxing, he's improving, and uh, the training was hardcore. When I say hardcore, is I'm not be able to do it today. It's just, it was always we'll see blood in the floor or, or in the clothes. And it's not as, it is going to hurt with intention. It's just, that, you know, so many push-ups, so many kicks, so much repetition. And the sparring, I will tell literally, it was 50, 60% of the class will be sparring. And then it will be technique. And I'm not saying that I agree with a lot of good technique. That was the times I'm saying, right? I know that he changed a lot and he became so much better. He went to massage therapy and he went to Thailand. He still fought with 50 years old in Thailand. So I hope I want him to see this interview that he even, he deeply uh, changed my life, him, right? Carlos, and I have to give him the, even if he's not my teacher today, I consider him my teacher all the times. 
and I still talk with him. But um, that, then he dedicated totally to Muay Thai and Bara. But during the time I was with him, I, I was learning Aikido, I was doing Aikido. So he, Aikido Yama Rio, that the teacher Alberto was learning Mori, with Moriiro Saito from Japan. The Karate Shotokan, we're related. It was Vilasa Pinto, it was the technical director that would train directly with Masatoshi Nakayama Sensei. So really good lineage. My Taekwondo teacher, I will train with with uh, with, uh, with him and then with the Taekwondo ITF. So even we have, it was ITF because we, for me special when I, I then I dropped the Karate Shotokan and even Daikido, I stay in Aikido and I went to dry locks. I really like a lot. And I was doing the Taekwondo, but the class were more 90% Muay Thai kickboxing. We learned the youngs. And then it was a Muay Thai with a lot of Taekwondo kicks, right? But our teacher, Korean, that was this teacher, and I will go with him many times at Lisbon. He was general, it was a uh, master, Grandmaster Chung. He, he was a direct student from General Shoi, the founder of Taekwondo. So this Taekwondo, it, it's it's totally different from the Taekwondo today times. Because yeah, I, was, I think that, so yes. If, if I'm following, <laughs> I try yeah. to get a timeline. Because I'm all way, I, I was I with everybody. I know he becomes very confused. So, Shotokan Karate, you met the instructor you just showed us a photo of who was doing Pedro. Taekwondo at the time, but mixing a lot of Muay Thai. But... And he was doing kickboxing. Now okay. he was already training kickboxing and full contact and Muay Thai, but it was more sport. After yes. I left, he, he went to Muay Thai and Bora and totally dedicated. So he was not Bora in that time yet. Yeah. And then what you were mentioning, it was something that I actually mentioned to a friend of mine recently about Taekwondo in the US and Taekwondo any, well, I don't know if it's anywhere else. I just know that ta I've Taekwondo guys in the US compared to Taekwondo guys in Japan and Korea, are just a different breed of people um and i think because they do more full contact fighting well, and full contact least... sparring so like the not to, not to say anything badly about no no about no. anyone it's, it's just but different. um it was just different it, well, I, I saw a big difference when i came out here and to japan and started sparring and this is now and i've also heard people who trained with the previous generation of taekwondo guys in taekwondo first came to the u.s and they kind of tell me the same story that my instructor told me when i came in he's like you know if you ever bump into a guy who says he did taekwondo in korea or they do taekwondo from japan or korea it's a different breed of um of taekwondo and he made yeah, that they, he made he's a, there's a lineage. distinction made. yeah they're different lineage yes yeah. and, and what i what i saw was even the forms were the youngs what looks like the peanuts was the old similar with the karate the ones I was learning, I was not learning like punces or tools. And um, there was a lot of boxing. And that's what I like it. Because for me, I'm a short guy. I'm 5'4", right? I'm 5'4". And so legs for me in, in WTF, for me, the rules, you know, maybe it's good for you, right? Tall, skinny, dark, you know, I'm like, I'm stocky, 5'4 guy. So boxing was good for me, right? And so I, um, that was a good thing. I remember when I fought with the, it was the WK European champion. And yeah, he, when we finished the fight, he went in the stretcher, it was a great fight. I broke him for scratch, uh, scratch four ribs, broke another two to him and he, and his eyes, I was all messed up too. So it was a great fight. I went three times to the mat but supposedly it was European champion and he trained me. So basically it was a demonstration fight. And I was like, this is not gonna be a demonstration on me. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, uh, so, and I'm not saying names. So, but I was in Portugal and say, hey, you, then they invite me to fight the British champion, right? I was, I was very light that time, you know. Uh, and, but again, what gave me strong was I have really good kicks. I jump really high for my, I love Jet Lee, for example, for that. I was, I remember reading all these books and Bill Walls, but I like Jet Lee, uh, Jet Lee. Uh, B Benny the Jet, I'm sorry. Oh, Benny, Benny Jet. the Jet Orchides. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. A, in fact, my grandmaster Diablo always talk. He's a really nice guy. I met him. I never met. I would like to meet him, but I will say, hey, this guy, 
short and so powerful. It was an example. I will see his fights. I have his books, his videos, and I will incorporate because I, I saw him like the short guy and I'm a short guy, right? So I'm going to use that. I will use a lot of back kick, jumping back kicks, like we will show from Taekwondo. There was, a, I don't know if you know, we will show, but he's an amazing Taekwondo master in the United States. It, amazing guy. Uh, Korean master, but he put a lot of boxing, right? But anyway, what I like a lot was I developed very strong kicks and, and the chance conditioning and breaking big pieces of wood. In the time, you know, it was hardcore. I'm not still, I can, I will teach it maybe di differently today times. And I'm sure that my teacher teach differently today. That was the times, the way we train and we cannot change that. And it was, we will train it to exhaustion. But what I remember is all my friends from Kajukeme Kosho, Rio, Pedro Puran, uh, Renato, all the, uh, some of these guys, in it, anytime we get the seminars, everybody will train. I think it's the mentality, and I miss that in Portugal. Everybody's, bah, bah, bah. everybody's, it's, it's, it's training hard, and, and that thing comes out in fire, right? Because I think. Portuguese are very bipolar, <laughs> uh, right? In a good way, you know, we, we very emotional, very happy, hug everybody, drink. It looked like Vikings are, we, we, we make, Portuguese are mixed with the Vikings with the Moors. We have the best from two, right? We're just there. But anyway, I, and I, I have very dearly all these training with people from several systems, you know, um, but Carlos Pedro was a big influence. I love the boxing and the elbows and the knees and the low kicks. And that made me so much better martial arts. Then I started Apkido and sword. And then I wanted more, right? And it's think, interesting. It's interesting you say you wanted more because you've, you've already gotten a lot, man. <laughs> you went from Shotokan to taekwondo that was doing kickboxing that was doing muay thai that was bringing in even more people and competition, then competition. And went to france were, i went to spain and you I said represent you, national selection team it, for taekwondo in taekwondo contact in paris Bercy. i was part of the national selection team 98 99 i don't even remember something and then like at that. this point how old were you so like from 15 you get into taekwondo how old were you when you got into taekwondo I probably was three, so 92, probably 96. Okay. After three years of karate. So you were probably 18 now. So you're 18. No, no, no. I, uh, yeah, probably. Seven, around, eight, eight, around 18. Around 18. Well, let's say, yes, 18. Probably, yes, 18. Okay. You're right. And then you get into the Taekwondo, and immediately the it's Taekwondo, but they're already cross training with kickboxing and muay thai from the from the get -go. yeah from eight at least 18 23 and i was going to spain i went to france i i was i, I was competing so much and that the, at least that five years five six years between 18 to 24 and right what, and, I, and i started teaching also in the same time i was teaching already okay right? and what, what got you <laughs> sorry i tried to turn for the when you went from Shotokan to Taekwondo, were you, what was your rank? I was mm -hmm. like, uh, I was red. I was going Good to belt. test my bronze belt. I don't okay. forget it, right? Okay. I was okay. training three, four times a week. Okay. And, um, mm -hmm. and and it's, and it goes slow independently. Even if you go bronze, then probably you will stay more three, four years on that. Yeah, yeah, it took a long time. So like- and Then when I went to Taekwondo, I already, the good thing was I already, the good thing was in karate, a lot of times I remember that you cannot do that kick. You cannot do that because I was already doing 360 like Van Damme, axe kicks. I was doing tornado kicks, all that. So when I went to, when I went to, when I went to type, you know, I remember that my teacher first class will tell, okay, you need to spar with these three guys. He starts sending people first class. Are you from... Karate, okay. Can you put the gloves? And uh, yeah, they they hit me a few times, but I hit them back. And he told he told me, yeah, you were able to keep the game. I'm really surprised because you're a karate guy. So he's like talking, uh -huh. talking 
it's just a karate guy, but I'm really surprised. So my, when I was with, with Carlos, I will tell, I was training every day. I was basically every day. And now Saturdays, I remember going to Serra del Rey. Well, it's, it's in the area. So if you say Nazare, it's like one hour and a half. It's, it's not far away from Caldas da Rinha where it was Renato, for example. But I will spend four hours easy every Saturday. We were sparring, sparring, sparring. And basically what we'll do basically was he learned the forms of Taekwondo and test, but everything rest is kickboxing with, with kicking. Okay. So and then so Taekwondo like, with kick, so just, with just, punching just and of, breaking. Just for people that may or may not know the rule set. What was the rule set for, for the sparring? Do you remember? Full contact. Full contact. Full contact Where, and soft contact. Yes. What, I guess, what can you not do? Kicking in the groin. No kicking in the groin. No headbutts. Well, control with the elbows a lot control of times you already put some helmets and you will say mm -hmm. hey let's put some elbows but be careful and knee shots a lot of times mm -hmm. so be okay. careful we will have that protections right. so we'll put even the taekwondo one sometimes so you can you can go a little harder so we See? can hit with with, with with the knee shots um we have low kicks a lot okay. of low kicks i, I low remember kicks. being the, uh, in the discotheque you know like everybody's dancing on the floor and I'm I'm having my vodka lemonade and I'm having anti-inflammatories because my legs <laughs> were so mad and I, I, I will smell tiger bomb like 24 <laughs> my wife hates that smell <laughs> and I hate it now I can't do it I, will, I remember I was I will help my father in the wineries and he'll be down there and the wind we say he's like are you okay why you smell tiger bomb <laughs> so so low leg kicks, right? So you're doing low leg kicks. You're yeah. obviously punching to the face. And, what, and no the helmets. Can you imagine many times? So like, <laughs> like punching in the face. We'll have constantly. Then later we start having the helmets, right? Yeah. And don't forget yeah. the equipment super expensive. Yeah. I, I, it's a lot of times it's and, a problem because we and, have some people there that, anyway, long story. It's It was interesting times. And a lot of times I will ask myself, why I'm here because the trains would I really like him a lot, but we have some students who were really brawlers, right? It was not, I'm seeing that a lot of people that kept and be able to stay there have to have a lot of heart. And and I want to be a master in martial arts. So in my ideas, like I cannot only know kata and self-defense, I need to box and muay thai and or hit hard because this is the only way that I can become stronger. I have to suffer. I have to go through pain, even if I don't want it. And I remember I was so nervous to go to the class. I will go to the bathroom twice. I was so nervous. This this is class. Not even, we're not even talking competition. You're just talking about going into All class. The class. That's how hard it was. The <laughs> classes was hardcore, I have to say. And I appreciate today that I, you know, then eventually it became normal for me right? And I got the black belt under him. I was doing up key, the other things, but I start one because I need to know Gracie Jiu Jitsu and catch wrestling. And I want to know more about but, joint locking so and be, show. Before we go there, I just want to slow down, slow down for a second here. So just to mention to some people um, that are the modern martial artists, maybe the people that are listening to this and any, I mean, I don't know if you're a Taekwondo guy or if you're doing mixed martial arts and the kind of Taekwondo that Nelson just talked about is the kind of Taekwondo I heard about from other people and I've seen in other countries, but it is very different from modern day Taekwondo that in the U S where they don't allow punching to the face and that kind of stuff. Um, it's sounds very similar to like what I've experienced as far as kickboxing. So, so you're doing all your stand up. What you, you mentioned a lot of competition, but where I'll kind of just to slow the, I'm sure there's so many, it's hard to, we can't, we don't have the it's scope difficult. to talk about all of them. I was really busy. But one, if you can tell me what got you into competition, why did you, what was your first competition, your first fighting competition? What was it? What were the rules set? And why did you do it? The first competition I did, I probably was 16 years old. Okay. I, I won with 30 guys, or 20 something, 26, 27. It was a lot of people. It was in karate, shot the gun. It was no limit. I remember that was guys, I was like 16. I have guys with 10, 20 something. 
um, but I was small and super fast and I have a super Kizamitsuki Gatsuki and it was the, the fight point, right? Mm -hmm. And we're, we're not permitted to hit the head, but was advantage for me. I'm a small guy, I'm super fast. I remember that I, I was, my father had these food for the dogs, you know, and in the times and, and they have these meat and it was so much flies in the backyard. <laughs> And I'm catching flies, right? With like finger jab and then close and grab the fly because I want to, to put the point, right? Like, you know how the karate, ah! yeah. so I'm, I remember like in two days, I always remember this, like in two, three days, I probably caught between Friday to Sunday in a weekend before the, com the next week competition, I caught like 60, 70 fly. It was crazy, you know, I, and kid right no, so, I, I want to be fast so the comp the, the the rules were fight point bring ki I, I, uh, that was my first i won first place i compete in kata and i won first place in both kumite and kata and i was i was a kid between it was on i was 16 17 i was yellow belt and i had other guys i remember one of the guys i fought he told me he was a black belt in Angola, but when he moved to Portugal, he started from beginning, from white belt. And he was like 28 years old. Teodosio, I remember his name and I have a picture with him. I don't know what happened to him, but I have a picture with him doing the side of Yok uh, Yokogeri. And he stopped and Teodosio is by my side. And yeah, he was a good guy, you know. Uh, but it was it was hard to fight him because he's hitting me boom 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 like and I, because the points were only here I'm 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 trying to cover I'm using the rules again I'm not saying that the street fight rules but th there were the rules you know if I'm able to be very fast and and hit and put the key up and don't let them hit you know as a kid I was like I need to, a strategy plan and and I was fast and 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 small guy so it was adventure for me but eventually that I felt that um that going to taekwondo and especially when it was a taekwondo with kickboxing and with elements of muay thai at that time even if now it's totally muay thai wara, right he went in that direction he dropped all that that's what I want it was more difficult it was hard I saw the training was difficult but I said for me it was well I need to invest this to become a better martial artist and but what was, was good with my teacher that in that time we have good friends in Kosho Ryu, Kachu Kimbu, and we already trained in the seminars. And I remember they will bring masters, you know. I, I remember bringing Professor Muro uh, and guys from Dazan Ryu and guys from Serrada. That today I'm I'm training Serrada right now. In fact, I'm training to do the testing in April in Serrada Esgrima. To, so it's one of the part of the stock, the multi-style, the system that I'm doing now after many years. But, and so I was exposed to that and I love the hands of Kimpo, right? So I remember buying videos and I, I'm copying these Kaju Kimpo, Kimpo techniques. And I, it was natural for me. And, and that's what it takes so you understand what happened. I met, I was reading this magazine and um. And he came a, a German student, but he, he taught also from the grandmaster. Grandmaster from San Francisco. And the system was modern Farang Musul, right? He's here with a very traditional system. We train with camouflage or with shorts or boxing. It's, but the traditional warang is like the samurai. It's kind of, I took this picture to my teacher in, in Korea, South Korea. Um, and I'm on an article with him and some of my brothers and sisters. So anyway, my grandma, I met Grandmaster Michael Diaba and I love it was, oh, the forms look very Kempo. They're not only linear, they're umyang, they're hard and soft, right? That movement here. And I said, some people will say, hey, that's not Korean. I said, oh, the Korean also have Chinese influence and we will go there. And I was like, this is very beautiful, but he also, but he was a full contact champion. Okay, that's a plus. So it's not the show of martial art. They do full contact. Okay, I respect that. Oh, shit, he incorporate BJJ and catch wrestling. You know, it was in some classes in BJJ. You know, he met Frank Shamrock, right? Other friends in catch wrestling and he have a curriculum 
you know, the system have a critical, but so this system was modern Farang Musu, Farang, uh, modern Farang Musu. In Chinese, we'll see Wushu or, or Farang Jiu Jitsu because Musu means war. And then that's a Korean martial art. It's a Korean, but I will <laughs> okay. tell you how interesting it was. Uh, so it was elements of several warang arts and Japanese art. So then going back, so everybody think that the, the let me, before I go to the history, I like the system because I saw that they have, it looks very like Kempo, the forms, Chinese. You have a lot of striking, you have full contact, you have MMA ground. I was like, oh, awesome. He also has jujitsu, and everybody's talking about the Gracie now. And have healing arts. And I love this. I want all this. I want, I want to learn all this. I want the mix of the traditional and the MMA world. You know, a complete war is the fusion. It's not just MMA, but also have the traditional aspect. But have I love Kimpo, but I'm already in Taekwondo Apkido, and this is Korean. But I'm also kickboxing, but he also have, but he have grappling that I want to start learning it. Um, and he have all these weapons, you know, like you see on the back, we have, supposedly we have 110 weapons, conventional and conventionals, but they are nine categories and I can start telling the categories, but we're not gonna talk, but they basically there are 25 weapons that I kind of work. Um, and more than that was not only Young's forms, Kata, he have sets and I saw videos, they're sparring with sticks and they fighting with knives and they call the knife guy. And I said, okay, this is not a kata guy. You know, he's a kata, but they spar and they have sets. It's not just, ah, do a kata, but why is the movement? I don't know, I'm just doing the kata because that's a problem. A lot of people, I know forms, okay. And they show a kata, it's like, okay, uh, how you fight with that? And I want to know, right? I do his agreement, but I love this agreement I do because they will then go full contact and have drills, boom, 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 like they do with boxing. Same thing with shields and baiting the sticks. And I want something that is functional, but I want the tradition too. I don't want, I think tradition is important. I, I want to be between worlds. So I'm a libertarian in martial arts. I am in the middle and I like both sides. And I think everything have a great value. And that's where I, I stand with all the respect. So I think both worlds are good. We need balance in the equation. So I contact him. I contact him. And in the time, you know, Americans, right? Just already normal. Send me. He was so nice. I talked with some masters, very laid back. I love that. The American style is he's Mexican. Uh, but born and raised all his life in San Francisco, you know, San Francisco boy. And, uh, but he, you know, he studied with all these teachers in Korea. He was in, in, in military in South Korea, a lot of students, law enforcement. So he, he's teaching AR, when I shoot AR-15 and guns and everything was in the United States because he was, he, he taught me all, 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 all the security rules and all that. Even if later on I became, I was a few years in law enforcement as a correctional officer. So I went to all the train. We, but anyway, long story. And I want to, I contact him. I contact him. It was nice. Uh, he sent me all these VHS. Don't ask me for money, where I was kind of surprised. One day I have this big box with VHS tapes until black belt. And I have this t-shirt and I have this manual and oh my gosh, he's so organized. But I'm like, how I'm gonna learn with VHS, right? <laughs> so what I do is I was teaching in that time already and I'm going to classes and I'm, I'm training all the forums. I got a, a dummy in the time we don't have the grappling dummies. I got, a, 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 you know, the mechanic suit. I fill it up, I did the skeleton, I put the soccer and I start doing corner top, side top, full mount, back mount, reverse, top reverse, leg tie, guard position. And I start imagining this on me now. I have to run, escape from a corner top, I have to skip from a side top. I start training because he have, you know, organized problem. Okay, corner top positions, 36 finish, you know, jaw locks and you have chokes, we have leg locks, da, da, da. you have all these 10, 12 escapes, right? 
And, you know, some is more street fight because you cannot do certain. But what I like is grappling was, you know, everybody's now talking about grappling to the streets. Like my teacher already was doing, yeah, you hit him in the groin, you rake his eyes. It was part of his technique, technique number one. Okay, you're in a side top position, slam on the groin, rake with the thumb on EI, right? This is street fight. And then you have techniques submission, right? They're different, right? But I uh, already have all that. It starts very... Uh, and then you have all anchor, like ankle cranks, uh, leg cranks, uh, neck cranks, finger cranks, and that they're not permitted in the grappling today times, but it's all in the program and it's well explained. When you go in competition, don't use this. For the street, use this, right? It's very comprehensive. And I, I like the system was very complete. You know, I have all this. And so I start training, training, and I came a time, I call him and I say, I want to move to the United States. I want to train with you. I want to live there. They say, when? Next, next month. And he told me, okay. So I bought the ticket and I moved to the United States. I backed back, my parents, everybody calling me crazy. And I moved to San Francisco. And when I was in San Francisco, I have opportunity to meet people like Rick Alemani. I will train in his dojang. I don't know if you know Rick Alemani, Rich Alemani, grand, great grandmaster Rick Alemani. And then because of that, Bob Mishmeyer, Sifu Ming, the late Sifu Ming Lum, Andy Novak, Professor Gaylord. In the middle time, Joseph, Joseph Albuna died. And then we went to his memorial. You know, uh, great grandmaster Ralph Castro that was in, in his memorial two years ago because he learned Kimpo was one of the, he learned Kimpo with the Navarro family that they were the line of Ralph Castro, that he still keep his friendship with him. He was his first teacher. So because he was, he learned Chinese system, Japanese full contact, but the basic was the, the Korean system. So going back, what people think that um, Korean martial arts are Tang Sudo, Taekwondo and Apkido. Yeah, wrong. That's, that's, that's what they mostly know of, yeah. Very wrong, very wrong, why? Because until 1910, before the Japanese occupation of South Korea, there was 1910 to 1944, Americans came, fight, liberation of South Korea, right? Long story. Before the systems were Chinese influence. And we have the Warang systems, there's several. You know, Dohap Su, Sumudu, et cetera. And he learned several of them, four principal ones. The forms, like you have the Bubichi for karate systems came from China. He, this was the one of the few books that survive. And I bring the wrong book. Give me one second. Sure. Here. So this is the book, one of the few books that survived the Japanese occupation because they burned everything like Hitler did with the German, right? Mm -hmm. And you will see that since 1500s that they were going to China to get knowledge because especially after they start fighting the Japanese because when it was the Mongolian or the barbarians it was fight, easy to fight them. But after they start having Japanese more organized, very aggressive and with fire, firearms and so on, right? Totally different. It's like now they're fighting Russia or China. It's not, a, they're not fighting a small country. They're fighting this superpower. So they start going to Ming Dynasty and start getting knowledge. And that's why you will see the forms, Chinese, we call Kwamba, but in Chinese, you call Shuan Fan. In Japanese, you call Kempo. And in Indonesia, you will call Silat. All these, so Kwambop is the fighting method fest, right? And Kwambop is in Korean. So basically, if you see, they all come from Chinese roots, the Warang systems. And that's why the forms with weapons, right? That's why Kaju Kempo friends and Kempo's like, that looks like Kempo. And that, no, you look like Farang. <laughs> Because in fact, your system started in the 50s. <laughs> you know, I joke with that, right? The 50s. Our systems are like 1910. They almost disappeared because of the Japanese occupation, right? But they were here before and they came from China. For example, Tai Chi, they have a version they call Tai Gu Quan, 
right? Quan means the fist, but Tai Guk, the Um Hin Yang, or we call Hum Yang, the six elements, right? And so if, if I show it inside, you will see, I don't know if it's possible here, but for example, you see like sword fighting. It's, yeah. It was, it. So this is a military manual. Uh, you see like the tridents, right? Like the one I have right there. Here. If I put the camera a little bit. Oh yeah, I can see it. You see it. So all these weapons they're using because the military needed to fight, right? You see empty hand forms. And they, they're very explicit. They brought it from Chinese systems, right? So the, the root of modern systems is Chinese. And so that's why you will see forms more like, more like this, right? You see combinations like this is, ah, oh, that looks kind of Kimpo. Ah, oh, why? Like, uh, that's not Korean. This, it, it is Korean. What happened was on, after 1910, 1944, 95, the Japanese almost destroyed, it was the, the idea was to destroy the Korean culture, right? We know, obliterate. They even sent mails to Japan and they give Japanese hot here now, excuse me. So they became, um, so they will give Japanese names to them and they want the males to, to learn Korean Japanese culture. So when they come back, the Korean culture is destroyed, right? And so on. So that's where you have people that General Choi learn Shotokan and do the Taekwondo mixed with seven kwans. You have the Aikido that came from Daito Ryo Aiki Jiu Jitsu from Sokaku Takeda, right? And then we see Moriai Wishiba came from the same place. Moriai and Shoyong Sul Aikido. Okay, so what happened was my teacher learned from several teachers from Warang arts, Chinese influence, but he also learned with Apkido masters. And these Apkidos, one of them, one of them like from Warang, the teacher Dr. Jumbang Lee was learning directly Apkido with Apkido directly with the with the founder or uh, the 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 or Myang Jam Nam lineage that was from from Grandmaster Kang, so, and so on. So several influence. Now, you can also say that he was influenced a lot by Wally J, even if he never certified nothing, but everything he got it. So, but talking about the Korean systems, he, he got it from big masters, but from both sides. Some of these systems almost disappear, like Dohap Sul is one of them. Today I was teaching a form um, to, one of my, to one of my brothers in San Francisco, and I was telling, hey, let's learn this. Ah, oh, this is a yeah. It came from Dohap Sul. The system is like we don't know where he is the system, and basically the same system was what forms and striking and weapons it was no joint locks because the joint locks people think joint locks is not properly one thing that even if they have China, the joint locks that we have basically in Korea came from Apkido, from Japanese influence. So what happened with modern Fatan Sul was a system in the traditional part was you have these Chinese Warang systems and like Taekwondo and Apkido from Japanese influence and they blend. And of course, my teacher later on learned Jikundu and Wushu and several other arts. Kempo was his first where he got ranking with from the Navajo family. They still good friends of him from San Francisco that they were learning with, Bram, great, with the, uh, the late great grandmaster Ralph Castro. So on, of course, you have influence in Zguima because it's the Bay Area and he's learning with everybody. But the principal thing, the philosophy is based on the Warang warriors. There was like the samurai from Korea. There were military. And, and that's why all these very fancy dress, right? And all the colors that is characteristic of, of, the, of the Korea, the blue and the reds and the yellow, right? And, um, but that's the philosophy we use, like they use the Japan used the samurai, we use the Warang warrior. It was the ones who are fighting. It's always that big drama movies, Korean, that the Warang fighting, the Japanese invading, right? So they were a military class. So I like that kind of romantic, let's call it. I was like, well, wow, this is great because they do full contact. They have, not, they have this grima, like my friends from Kaju Kimbo and Kosho, they're mixing. They have, the forms look like Kimpo because I, I always love Kimpo and Kaju Kimbo. 
I don't want it never it never happened that I I'm sure that I, if I have learned it I'll be I think I'll be a good practitioner and I think like Renato Pedro Purain Nunes there are several people in Portugal that I respect highly uh, Professor Nunes from George Lamb line Lima White Campbell uh, Renato from Angel Garcia Pedro Purain that learned with Miguel Rivas that I met his teacher and now he's connected with Professor Muro. You know, they, they're such an amazing martial artist. And I, I have to say that my brothers in Portugal, they inspired me, but I was already in full contact my time Korean arts and I was able to find my Kosho or my Kaju Kimbo in Korean martial arts. And I was like, great. And they also having complete grappling. I didn't, don't go to great jiu-jitsu. So. I moved to San Francisco. I stayed there almost for a year. I met all these big East friends. I was training in several schools. Um, and I, I just, I don't want no belt. Eventually I did the black belt before I moved. I did it in, in the school. I was graduated and I teach my seminar in the school of uh, the uh, grandmaster, great grandmaster, Rick, Rick Alemani. He was still there. He still had the school. And then he went to student Sifu John Ash. And I think now he's closed the school. Um, and I had the opportunity to, to meet a lot of these friends. And funny enough is most of our friends, even if we're Korean martial arts, are his Grimm and Kimball people in some MMA because with all the respect and I have good people in Korean martial arts, they, a lot of times they don't accept us because it's some have the mentality that it's Korean martial arts, Apkido, Taekwondo, that mentality. And so it's like, oh, in fact, in fact, with all the respect, we bring the art, the martial arts before and after Japanese invasion. We, we try to be the Kaju Kimbo right, for the Korean martial arts. We, we brought the, the two sides, the root, the, the, in the traditional aspect, we have the Chinese and the Japanese roots that, in, that influence so much the Korea culture. And then like, like Kaju Kimbo, and I talk like you, like we, we, we have the need that our hands, even you have some forms like this, right? You will see that all the key on, it's all this, Fari Musu. You have a lot of forms. My teachers, when they say this, this, it's a break or armpit, armbar, you're breaking. It's not even a punch, right? This is you grabbing and breaking. And you see a lot of even some forms right now, even traditional, you come here, 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 you do a technique and then jab, cross, hook, <laughs> even in the form. So it, it makes, and I, I like that. Some people maybe don't like. I personally embrace the, the past with the future and not separate that. And I like what my teacher did. And I think it is the evolution because if you see all teachers were rebels, right? The karate have lasted 100 years, right? It was Nawate, Tomarite, and then he went. Taekwondo in the 50s and Apido in the 50s, 60s, right? So if we think really well, all teachers that were our professors that came before us, they also were students and they also learned from several teachers and then they evolved. They have the need to do that. So today times, one thing is to be traditional and one thing is be classic mind. Classic, it means you stay, you bought an Atari, right? Or a computer Schneider and you still have 100 megabytes hard disk or you're still a Schneider computer or IBM, but now have all these five terabytes. You're the same computer, but you evolve. And I see that martial arts, and that's what I love in Farang Soul. So anyway, the, along these last tw 20 years, I've been back in four United States. I will go three months there and my teacher will come to Europe. He'll stay two weeks. He came to my wedding. Uh, my, he became like a father for me. I learned so much with him, more than martial arts. And that's what I like him. You know, he, 
uh, it was traditional martial arts and then took me to the fighting range with you know, music and, and learned about the cuisine in San Francisco, so much Mexican food and Italian food. I was exposed so much. And I will talk about Portugal. Ah, oh, we have amazing bread and this pastry and this coffee, right? And he's like, ah, no, but San Francisco, then we went to Portugal, say, oh my gosh, Portuguese food is so awesome too. So what I have been all this exposure and help finding so in other countries and traveling. I start traveling and when I start teaching, I start teaching law enforcement, military, went to Kuwait. I came to Texas, helped my teacher to go teach military like in Keeling, Austin and Puerto Rico went more than six, six times and in going to Germany and Poland and, and because of him was a lot of, um, he gave me a lot of tools that I don't have before and to learn. So it, it's like, I can spend hours talking about this but I want to say that a lot of people not only my teacher but all these friends you know go to gatherings because you have all these friends and what I like is it expose me I will meet these people from American Kimpo and from Silat and Kunta when I learned from them and never I never what I like on him was he never made me this right but he say oh this is the world yeah, don't look to the don't look to the finger, look to the moon, right? Or you're gonna lose all the glory, all celestial glory, right? And that's what I like on him. Farang Musul, and I became now I'm a fifth degree. I did my testing in 2012. I think it's time to do after 10 years to do my sixth degree. <laughs> I've been waiting 10 years. In the middle time, I um I started in Esgrima the last since 2014. Right. I moved to, to United States in 2012. I've been in law enforcement. I was for a few years um, before alcoholic rehab. I was with the sheriffs and then mental disabled pedophiles. And then I went finally to DOC. And then uh, I helped my wife. She became an electronics engineer and said, OK, time for me to do something more. That I have time for martial arts and start teaching and be happy, do something that really makes sense and spend more time with my wife because I was 16 hours and law enforcement and life was very difficult. I lost 45 pounds since I la left law enforcement, but that was the job I got. It was easier to get to the United States with benefits, make more money. You know, you live in the United States, you know, have a good Medicare. So, okay, I need to sacrifice. But in middle time, I started learning a lot of scream, you know, I Sarah, the Libre Fighting, went to visit Scott Bab, and I want to learn more about chanking systems because I'm, I'm in the prison. I need to understand the mentality. And um, and I start with uh, Bobby Tabuada with Guru John Suryan, where I'm the fifth level. And I've been a little bit in standby because I don't have a lot of training partners. I had more for stock than multi-style. Uh, so I graduate in August and start the multi-style with these, the Bahalana, people know by Bahalana, we call Giron is Grima, but start multi-style, have the Cuerdas and Serrada. So the influence are from Stockton, uh, that is the, the Mecca of the Filipino martial arts in the United States. In fact, outside the Philippines, because the immigrants, then they move, right? Do you know who is Leo? Who, who was Grandmaster Leo Iran? Me personally, I don't. Uh, would you mind letting me and my listeners know? So he's the father of Largo Mano in the United States. Largo Mano, long distance, even if you have close, right? And uh, his system, he was, a gen he was a sergeant under General MacArthur, Marine. Um, so his system was, he had a real confrontation with the Japanese when it was in the Philippines. And that time they will come with the bayonets and we, it's still some officers with the swords. So I have real comp fighting with that. In the time, the, Fil the Filipinos were not able to go to the military, but in second world war, because they invading the motherland, the government, the government give authorization to them. So 2000 Filipinos registered the living United States. So they did two platoons. Uh, he became a sergeant under General MacArthur, uh, long story, submarine, left in the island, mixed with the population, Japanese look to them, they're American soldiers, but they look what? The natives of the island, so they're giving information, counter-information, spionage, um, 
some purple arts, Olympic Book of Filipino Martial Arts, in fact, in uh, Washington, D.C. library. Um, and the system, it's basically, they call 20 systems, but it's like Largo and the Fondo. So Corto, short distance, and Largo. And then, of course, to go to short, to go to Largo, you have to go by medium, right? And then there are 18 systems inside. inside. So, the, so what you can, some Kitty trusts or uh, Abanico system. But uh, his mentality was the system is very low, uh, while Giron is green. In Stockton, you learn three. So Giron, Cerrado, and De Cuerdas. <laughs> Gilbertinho De Cuerdas, Angel Cavales, the father of his green in the United States, the first school. It was the first school to the public, like commercial school. It was him, Angel Cavales. And so, but Giron is our foundation, right? And so the system have 115 techniques in the 12 angles. Um, and it's very direct, the techniques. They're not flashy movements because as a, as a soldier, he knows that it's like when you go to sparring, you not apply all the very complex techniques. They have to be, they're like, you block and hit, you block and hit, you block X or redonda. The, it's no like what we can do, but if you have a bolo, right? A heavy sword, a machete, imagine you not you not want to do all the crazy stuff. You're gonna even hit yourself. So the idea is to block or intercept. Intercept means that I'm not even blocking, I'm just chopping an arm off or a leg or independently, how you bait him, right? And um the system is uh, the idea is just to get in and destroy, and I like that because of the simplicity. After studying many, it's like I like this. Is the mentality of a marine, and then what? The, that's why uh, uh, Tuan Daniel Sand was the first graduate. And he always said that this is a system for a platoon to train fast soldiers and send them to war because of the practicality. You know, as a martial art, and if you want more a beautiful system, there are more outside. Some to learn fight fast with a stick or with a machete because it's a bolo mentality. Grab a bolo and just go to the imagine in a jungle and the positions are low because imagine you have the backpack, the rifle, the radio, food, boots, mud, heels. So it's based on the geography. You can imagine it being in the Philippines fighting in the hills and so on. So they have, we can have, you can be in the top position or very low because it's based on the ground. Imagine you have, you're fighting in snow or you're fighting in mud. You, you cannot use the same footwork that is in an urban city and everything is dry, right? And then my question. Yes, please. So you, we're kind of getting towards the end of your journey now. And we are wrapping up right now towards our, our closing hour right now. Yeah, we've been for um, so long. I know. My, I'm trying um, to accelerate. My, before we kind of wrap things up, how many styles have you studied? Oh, so, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll make this easier. How many styles have you gotten certificates in, like black belts and whatnot? So it's like this. I'm a fifth degree in modern fighting with soul after 30 years, right? And um, I'm a fifth dan. Um, my grandmaster um, gave me the seventh degree in Apkiri Taekwondo inside the fighting with soul because it's inside. But I don't, with all the respect, I don't take them very serious. So I always say I'm a fifth degree, fifth dan in fighting with soul. And I'm a esgrimador in stock the multi style, all right? right? All right. And I'm waiting to grad to do my next testing. It's like a full senior, it's like a full instructor guru. When I learned the portion of Sarada and the Cuerdas, but it's other systems inside of Stockton, I'll be, I have the full system completed. And then okay. when I do the sixth degree in fighting school, I have the also old curriculum because I still have curriculum fifth to six. I have some sets of self-defense. Um, and I have some forms and some weapons, uh, weapons, not only form side of fighting, um, some because it's ahead, it's they're a little bit more traditional, right? So just That's, to clear things up, you have two instructor certificates 
Yes, in, in I, I'm a master. I'm a master in Farang Usul, one of the top students of my teacher, Grandmaster Diava, the one we talked about on the cover magazine. And uh, uh, under Guru Master Jun Gotiko and Guru Terry Joven and Guru Eugene Inis in stock the multi style, what is the top one is Giron Esgrima, and then with Serrada and the Cuerdas, I'm an Esgrimador. So they, they call, uh, they give me the level of Esgrimador. And okay. then when I do the next level, I'll become a guru. Mm -hmm. What is the final level? Oh, okay. But as a Esgrimador, you teach Esgrima, is that? Yes. Just I to kind of clear, because I, 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 I think, honestly don't know. That's yeah, what I'm asking. It's, it's probably what many th people will think. Okay, he's an instructor. Yes, I'm an instructor. Okay. But okay. the next level is like the master level. And I don't want to call it master level. It's a guru level. It's yeah. like, okay, this is all the rest of the knowledge. Still, of course, always going to be things to work. But is this is the curriculum. And that's my next step. But what that makes I'm, sense. I mean, because there's different types of martial artists. And not to say, again, I, I try not to put value statements on anything. But sure, there, there, are, there, are, there are those people who have like 20 different certificates. Nothing against these people that, that go after like, no, I have no, a, I'm have no. an instructor in this and this and this and this and this. But I, I personally, Two my... Systems. That's my, what I um, did in my life right okay, now. Yeah, well, like, that's what I need to do and start the multi-style. All right, yeah. It's and then, Korean MMA Kaju Kimbo style. Korean, my, our Korean Kaju Kimbo, let's call that. <laughs> it, it, it is. A lot of people say, ah, oh, you, you move like a Kaju Kimbo, like the friends of mine. But anyway, like this Korean Kaju Kimbo, let's play with that, right? Because yeah, it's a mix. And then this Filipino martial art, that also it's a mix of three systems. They put it and that by himself, they already had the, the teacher of these three, these three systems inside of this system. They already have several teachers, by the well, way. And just, just to make things... Uh, I, I, I'm trying to wrap things up, and I don't want to open up this discussion because sure. it, it turns into a can sure. of worms. I, and it happened anyway with sure. it, not the last time. But um, so for those people that don't know, Kaju Kembo is actually just an acronym. That's what it really is. It's Ka for Karate, Ju for Judo Jiu Jitsu, Ken for Kempo, <sighs> Kung Fu, and Bo for Boxing, Kickboxing. So like from there, very similarly, you'll have a, a, a mixed style. And um, and yeah, we have our founders and all that. And I don't want anyone to get into sure. that because I have a, story, I, it's right? a long story. <laughs> I just, I just wanted to clear up exactly because, and again, because of your travels and the people you met, obviously you've, you've been influenced by a lot of different great oh instructors and you've met, you've, you, you, you mentioned Cedro and Prado, which is the founder of Kaja Kembo. So like you, you did get to get out there and, and meet a lot of people. Don't. Yes, it's some of these people I just met. Let's not yeah. confuse that. Oh, yeah, no, not not, tra not not trained. Like, not like trained. Many, just say, I, some I really yeah. train, but it's like when I say train, it's like a seminar don't count, right? That's yeah, an yeah, yeah, exactly. And others, yeah. I just shake hand, like you know, Siju, with all respect, the late Siju Adrian Imperado was there for Jose Albuna at Parker Jr. was there and a few other people. He was on his wheelchair, right? And for me, it was an honor when I took a picture with him because I consider like, you know, he's, he's, one, he's like a Funakoshi, he's like a Jigoro Kano. And for me, that love all martial arts, for me, I don't care if he's Kaju Kimli is not, but he's not my Kung Fu, right? <laughs> for me, have the same value because he changed history, he touched history, right? He was like a Bruce Lee in my opinion, right, in my humble opinion, like Ed Parker, other ones that that make history. And for me, all these people deserve that respect. I think that Grandmaster Dialva was a kind of a Siju Adriano Imperado, since we are talking about this, in the Korean martial arts, right? Because he brought all these systems together in one, that in fact, they're from mostly the traditional part, all from Korea, but then he, he needed that. We need grappling and we need some trapping and we need some esgrima and he add that. And especially in San Francisco, you have access to all these amazing people. But when he, when we talk about systems, what he did was he add concepts. The con because a kick is a kick, a punch is a punch, but he's the concept and idea that he, the ideology and the strategy that he used it for fight. Because I don't care how much you know, if you don't have a strategy offensive and defensive and how you complete that missing link, 
you know, you can have 100,000 forms, but did you know how to fight? Do you understand? So it, it, it is that ideal ideology that I, we need to be the scholar warrior is a fighter versus a traditional martial artist. You know, you have to take, you need a, a strong foundation and then how and why I'm doing this. Because if you just copy, why are you memorizing all this if you don't understand what are you doing? And that's a problem that traditional martial arts give a bad taste to a lot of people and they're dying, especially in the United States. I don't see that happening in Europe. I think in Europe, it is still balanced. People want BJJ and MMA, but they still love, like, I see how Kimpo is so strong there. A friend of mine that was telling me, uh, he's a wine Portuguese, saying, you know, uh, my, and I'm not saying names, um, but, and he said, God, you came in Europe, it's going so strong. And in the United States, it starts dying now. It's still strong, but we feel it's not like before. But in Europe, it's like, People were so angry. And it's not only that. You will see that in other systems that I know. And that's kind of, I, I think TV, it's related, but it's also because of the Mac Dojo. Let's talk about it. So people have that bad notion. So as a traditional martial artist, we need, and I know you are like that for what I also saw and follow in your page. You're a Kajukem guy, but, right? And Kajukem in himself is like this, but you know more Kajukem, but traditional. Let's talk, but you have the Kaju Kimbo guys, tough guys. I know them. They put boxing, Sanda, Muay Thai. They learned some BJJ. And that becomes like a crazy Kaju right there. And I kind of like when it was the Farin Musul that I thought I feel that is the same way, but in the same, it's the bow and it's the respect. And we still kept some form. Some people don't agree, right? And I respect them. I like forms too. I like the balance. I don't like to eat only spaghetti or only meatballs, <laughs> but I want to boast of Mamma Mia, right? Spaghetti <laughs> meatballs. And I think that's martial arts in my definition. And Farai Musul, uh, it's my top art. It's the legacy if I have to leave someday. It's this Chinese, Japanese influence system that it's Korean because it's South Korea, but we know the roots and we cannot forget our roots. And, and we always have to give credit to our teachers. And about, um, so I have, before we finish, I have two final questions. Uh, my first one is how many, I'm, I'm going to try to say your, the for, for, Farang Musul, did I say that right? Farang, Farang Musul, Farang okay. Musul. How many? Faranga, Warang, it's all fanatical. You know how it is, right? So yeah. Wa, Fwa, there, it's the same. But Farang means the, the warrior, the, the knight, Right and musu or the blossom of the flower based on the Buddhism to bring the the best of inside to outside world. So based based on Buddhism, even if fifteen hundred years ago they learned three religions: Taoism, Shintoism, Buddhism. Why? So they can reach to all population. They want to be humble, so they were the teachers. They invent the language. I will talk so much; I don't want to go there. But they were very humble. They want to be the teachers, and that's why it came the golden age, Chila, right? Because you know it was science, the first astronomic power. They invent the porcelain that the Japanese want so much. Always invent because porcelain was more expensive. That it was more valuable than gold, right? Anyway, and um, so Chile dynasty, right? It was the golden age. They unify the peninsula because Korea was divided in four, right? Kaya, Pache, Koguri, and Chile. And then it became the, the Korea, right? The Shusun, the, the, more, the, the land of the, the morning calm, right? So um, yeah, I don't want to go more. <laughs> and how many practitioners are there of that of that art um around the world we, i guess we if, if, you, if you did a, if you did if you did a rough estimate a few hundreds i don't think okay. there are a lot i think there were more uh, i think uh, i'm not gonna lie i think we have a decline of of martial artists but i talk comparing what we had before um, it, it goes by like this it kind of lately i see like many more start teaching um, I think also COVID was a big impact right now in the schools like Puerto Rico. There were so many, more than 100, 200. And then they have the, 
uh, was the, the 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 storm that came. Oh, the, the the hurricane, the hurricane. Uh, hurricane. I forgot the name. Of it. I forgot right, the name so destroy their school. Master Vag is a good brother of mine, and they that guy is hardcore. They were bringing UFC champions to their schools, BJJ. They, I, I went there and I'm on their corner and they're in the octagons and MMA fights, right? They have, you know, and I, I learned so much. I was there teaching boxing and self-defense and stick and knife. And then they will kick my ass in an octagon. They have their rolling in the floor, grappling because he's mixing sambo. So he's doing his own blend of grappling. He will get all these teachers and he brought some people from ufc there and what was the so, name of his gym do you remember i know yeah what i know it's the vega vega okay. so master dennis vega okay he's it, so it was it was vega something i don't oh, remember okay. but i know well, that the gym was for, 12 feet underwater because the river it was by a river it came up oh, okay it destroy all the mats and they have an octagon everything and it's oh, like that sucks yeah that, it, then it, covid hit yeah and, and so everybody's been like is it one of those life. things where your style um a lot of the people that teach it on the door that it won't it'll say like maybe an academy or the name of something it won't say like f it won't say the name of the style on the door like it'll be well, the he never used the fun i i was fun in combat he was even uh, he was even on the i have a dvd in the Buddha international magazine that he was teaching trapping and amazing trapping trapping to grappling mm -hmm. so it was get in boxing trapping boom boom drills and then go to grappling with takedowns um yeah. but i know that this the gym was really cool because it was connected it was on the back of uh, so people are doing heavy weights so that was right fitness and weights and they have they they he rent the back a big a big part of the back of the school have this room it was huge where you have the octagon and you have the mats yeah. and that's what they have but it was inside of a gym like you imagine a 24 fitness but they were able to have the school inside and, and that was all part of the same academy yeah i remember going train there and I never was in Thailand, but I imagined that to be like Thailand. Mm -hmm. The floor was water. Water, when I'm stuck, is sweat. I never sweat so much. And I've been in Kuwait, and I know I always I was teaching Kaju Kimball. Was Kaju Kimball people that invite me from Bob Meyer line? And I had military, navy. I have the Royal Guard of the Prince of Kuwait. I, and I have a, a lot of important people there that I was teaching them. Uh, but I, and I don't sweat so much like in Puerto Rico. You know, this guy, we're doing boxing and doing Master Vega and their workouts. And but that humidity, and I have all the south now. Oh, right? yeah, no, I mean, in Puerto Rico gets really humid, <laughs> like really. My best for Stockton, for example, right? I'm 44, 45 now, very in, in, in a few months. Me and my brother Chris Lacava, for example, we're training other 80s, 90s. We're talking already like in the morning, 1911. It was in August and it was four hours doing three days. So we have to break it down because it was so hot. We did four, four, four. And he's like multiple strike, boom, 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 boom. I was all bruised up. And then a fourth day seminar. <laughs> uh, that's how they train us. The guys from Stock to Multi South, six instructors came here and they test us. We thought we were training. We never know that we're even being trained. <laughs> And it was so my experience. I have amazing teachers. That's what I have to say. And I want to appreciate Grandmaster Diablo and the Stockton family. Yes, sir. So mostly what, what, what the question I was asking, the reason I'm asking this is because the same yeah. the same thing happens in Kaju Kembo as well. Like there's a lot of Kaju Kembo instructors, but on the door, it won't say Kaju Kembo. It might say some if some of them, some of them will, like you got Kinji's Kaju Kembo, it'll say Kaju Kembo on it. Sure, sure, sure. But some of them, a lot of them. Sometimes it'll be something else like Ronan Academy or it'll have some other name. Yeah. Do you talk about the Vega? Name? I don't remember what right. was the name. And, and, of and, and, and why? Well, the reason I asked this is it kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier about in the US, there's been a decline in traditional martial arts. And I think one of the things that, and not, not to say, not again, not to say it's a good or bad thing, but one of sure. the things that what I noticed while doing this show and interviewing a lot of different coaches, UFC coaches as well um is a lot of us are involved in huge venues like one championship ufc a lot of the big fighting venues and kickboxing and boxing 
we're there. We're there as coaches and instructors, but we don't exactly advertise our traditional, well, not even, I mean, not to say that we're traditional, but we don't exactly advertise the martial yeah, arts. Yeah, you're right about that. That's what we do. And it's nothing, right. again, I'm not saying it's a good or bad thing. I'm just saying that's just what kind of happens. Um, so before- Like Leo, Lyoto Mashida, for example, we all know that he was like a Karachi Shotokan, right? Yeah. And yeah. He, he, he will do his katas. And he's, one of the, he's one of the few that actually was like, this is the style that I trained in, right? But then you look at like other champions like uh, Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor did Taekwondo. A lot. Yeah. That, that's where he started. And but again, but that's that's not that. because no one mentions it, right? Because when you go by the time he steps into the octagon, huh. you're not you're you're seeing wh who Conor McGregor is now. But when you look at his history, you find out that when he was younger, he started in Taekwondo. So like again, a lot of the people that people see in the limelight, they're seeing the final product. Like after years of training, like in your story train in this, you train in this style, you start cross training. And then when they, when they finally become a champion of something, they're seeing the final product and they kind of forget or do, or gloss over what yeah, got them. And I even don't talk like going training Jeet Kune Do and Wim yeah, Exactly. Right. And, you know, Sunday I, mean, Kali, it, I, I have it, all these people like Reister and then Carlito Bonjac and Serrada visit yeah. me. And I, it, I even don't, don't talk like Balinta or Aquintada with right. Lou John Torrens, Bobby Tabuada. But it's impossible. Like right now in my life, like I'm saying, the final product, like you're yeah. saying, it's it's these two systems because I came to a point that I start feeling old in a good way. When I say <laughs> to maturity, and I say, hey, I don't have time for everything. If I wish I had, but I don't have, at least for my so life. So kind of, have, have kind, of, kind of kind of tapping into that that note. For our final question, for yeah. anybody listening. Anybody listening who has put up with, with this conversation for this long that's not a martial artist, I'm always curious, if you're not a martial artist, please comment in the YouTube comments. If you've listened to this long conversation about martial arts and you're not a martial no, artist, no. my question to, to, for, 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 uh, my question for, uh, for Nelson is, um, is for you. Um, what would you suggest if someone wants to start training in martial arts what would you suggest they get into? Or what should they be looking for? Also depends what they're looking for. So if they're looking for self-defense is one thing. If they're looking more for internal arts, it's other thing. If they just look for weapons, other thing. If they so, want to compete, right? Okay. Like I want to compete in submission. I, Man, go catch wrestling or go BJJ. I, I I like MMA. You need to make some Muay Thai, right? Muay, a gym that offers you Muay Thai, and maybe some BJJ classes. That would be perfect. And that's, you know, if you're young and strong and, you know, not, you're like on your 20s, dude, that, that's a perfect time. So you learn something strong like that because Muay Thai, BJJ, you have a mix. Now, but you want self-defense, I'll say, hey, you probably look for a good Zgrima school, right? Because you also have the, you have Mac Dojo everywhere. You know, you have to look for a system that offers you, it's not the most beautiful, but you know, you know, see how is the technique and then did they, they spar? Did they, they apply the techniques? Because I know a few systems, they're really good. I will tell a few names, right? So for me, if you see, I have been a little bit around it. I don't do more BJJ. I would like to go BJJ class, but I feel like, you know, my neck, my shoulder, ACL replacement, my hip. And I'm like, ah, oh, man, you know, and my lumbar is like, do I'm going to be that? I'm, I'm always already start feeling it. And I still kick well and all things. But I'm like, in, I'm in the age that I start understanding I need to keep my body. Well, I have some grappling skills. Okay, let me try to keep this not i don't work so much like i did before but again you know it is important to have knowledge of all the distance from kicking to punching right to to trap trapping grappling stand up and grappling on the floor right you need to have giant locks you need to have shows we have to be, have knowledge of at least i always talk about etg vaccine eyes throat and growing, right? If you, it's self-defense, you go to self-defense, 
you know, you want finger jab, you want to hit them in the throat, you know, you, probably a woman or even a, a law enforcement, I will say, you don't want to fist fight because you break the wrist, cannot use the radio, the pepper spray, the cell phone, right? Or your gun, right? Maybe you need palm strike, finger chest, because you take the vision, you cannot see, you hit him in the throat, you cannot breathe, you kick him in the groin, he bends, you hit him in the, in the knee shot to have good low kicks. Because I like to kick high, right? I don't, cannot so much like before. But the reality is my students, I start very white belts, good boxing, elbow shots, palm strike, finger jab, and first kick is kick to the groin, finish the combination, boom, kick in the groin, you know, high, low, high combination, it's very easy, but I don't want just, you don't want just to throw and hit someone just because you're hitting, when you hit, you have to hit with the intention, right, you're in the rib cage, you have to hit in the neck, it's different that competition, right, you can, I'm not going to tell, oh yeah, you know, you grab on the wrist and you do a dry lock, no, you kick him directly on the chins and on the groin, you finger jab him on the eyes, rake his vision, it's totally, it's mindset, now, depending on the mindset, you grab the system, now, you can have a really good school, Kaju Kimball, right, and I will grab a fighting in soul, and and can be the same system that can be really good in the hands of someone else, but it can be horrible in that teacher. <laughs> so if, if, um, if I'm hearing the answer to the question correctly, um, I don't first, want to be running. <laughs> first, first of all, the person needs to really ask themselves what they, why they want to get into it and what their ultimate goal is. Right. Yes. And then second of all, once you did find that place, you want to make sure it's not a McDojo by making sure they're pressure testing their stuff and they're actually $500 and it comes with all these belts and the <laughs> golden belt. I will say if you're young, I, I would like the idea that MMA BJJ in his Grima class. And, yeah. you know, you know, maybe if he's someone like Kaju Kimball, like you that train hard, hey, go train with this guy right there. Why not? It offer his, if he's self-defense right now, I'm not too much of competition. I think I have... A good program. I do some Filipino boxing, my fighting Musul. I offer some grappling options, chokes, pressure points. I will teach you knife and stick, right? And more that to understand the offensive side is you have to understand the weapon so you can defend the weapon. And even when I talk about grappling the weapon, right? Grab and control, headbutt, elbows, how you control is not only in the very beautiful drills because someone is swinging on you and he's coming with that number five chink and chink, chink. And, and I think- Control that, and have that test of pressure. There. And, that, and that finally comes with your final point that whatever it is, make sure it's effective. <laughs> that's, it, it, it if, I, if I could get, if it, I could, if, could, if I can, if I could put there. Now, before we finish up, Nelson, is there anything you want to promote? Do you have any websites or well, um, anything I you want have, to mention? I have a new website now, very simple, clean. It's pintomartialarts.com. I also have uh, my, I have a YouTube page, Nelson Pinto. Um, Instagram, Pinto Martial Arts, LLC. Uh, and then I have a Farang Alliance.org. So it's FMS Alliance. If you write FMS Alliance, it will show up. So they, they're the websites I kind of have um, with some pictures, some videos, and, and some stuff from my teachers and more traditional with grappling, with weapons. And then here, here we are uh, for, yeah, the, for the YouTube watchers. Is, PintoMartialArts.com, very P I N T O M A R T I L A R T S, just exactly, just like it sounds, exactly how it sounds. PintoMartialArts.com, and um, and on here, I'm sure you have all your links to your yeah, it's missing YouTube the, and everything. I don't know else. what happened. Oh, I it's it's not, not secure. It's the the browser probably oh, okay. permitting. Yeah, yeah it's not. Yeah, turn know. off, turn off, turn off warnings. There you go. <laughs> But it is yeah, secure. But, Don't worry. It is secure. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go here if it wasn't <laughs> for anybody. Anybody I listening? I was just working with the it's web design, crazy. and then we have FarangAlliance.org. What is FMS Alliance? It's my oldest one. I have that website for twenty years, okay. around twenty, not twenty, like eighteen years. Probably. And you have you have links all that to the website. We just like there's links yeah, to that. And, stuff. And all you right. put Nelson Pinto Martial Arts. It, 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 it will have some, it will show up some results. There. All right, cool. Yeah, no, pintomartialarts.com, it went straight there. 
Um, my I have Chrome and a bunch of a bunch of virus malware stuff that it'll flag stuff that doesn't really, but it's all good. Make sure you check it out. <laughs> and Nelson, thank you so much for being on the show and sharing uh, so much knowledge, so much history. Uh, all I got to say is um, you dropped so many names and so many different types of histories. I'll probably, I hardly ever listen to my own podcast, but I'll have to probably re-listen to it a few times just to try to dig in a little more to, to learn a little more of some of the people that you mentioned, because I'm, I'm really curious. Yes, and I'm sorry the that I kind of no. board the line, There's, and I'm there. trying to compact. <laughs> but I, I think I, you know, I'm always lucky to be very, um, you know, I travel a lot and spend a, spend a lot of time and money, but I, uh, um, you know, I have a story to tell, and I, I, I don't, I don't regret. I think that I always tell people that I start on my since a kid traveling, and and then you know, uh, a lot of people I remember even back in Europe. Uh, it's eight degree, but you always in Portugal, and your teacher was from the other side of the planet. I can say that I even being there, I was traveling and already the black belts and coming back every year and bringing my teachers and even Skyping. I've been doing, people are talking about Skype now. I've been Skyping for, since we have Skype, right? We're talking about 15 years with my teacher constantly has been teaching me like that, what now is normal, right? But I will visit him and I have, I have my students. I've been, I was a professional for 14 years in Portugal. That's what I breathe. I will teach, train, and repeat and sleep and eat and next day the same thing on weekends go to seminars and i miss a lot portugal was very active more in seminars and and when you see seminars like 50 100 people so i miss all that guys renato uh if i'm not mistaken uh, and Pedro Purai and Nun Nunes, I, you know, uh, Rui Lacerda, Emmanuel Fernando. I have, I have a few people that I, they're very dear to me. They're amazing martial artists and we have so much quality. I think Europe in special is becoming a very big Mecca or ground zero of martial arts, at, at least in this between tradition but and, and mixing it. And they're still very tough guys. And nice things we have also. But, you know, of course, my heart's a little bit there. I've been, I lived 29 years in Portugal. And I know if they see this, I just tell that, you know, all these people, I appreciate they came of my life. Because it's not only the big grandmasters. It's everybody that surround me. And they inspire me. They inspire me to be better because I saw their level were so good. And I say, you know what, Nelson? Get up, you need to go jog, you need to hit the bag, you need to be in shape. And, and these kind of people, they, you know, don't be jealous, right? Be motivated. Oh, they're better than you. It reminds you like you're in Japan, right? Like Sangoku and Vegeta, Vegeta <laughs> right? Oh, I need to be a super warrior. I need to train more. And I use this fuel other people not to say, ah, talk bad, but to inspire yourself and to become better. And that's what I want. You know, I want to be that Mr. Miyagi, that I want to be better in my heart and whatever I can technically and whatever I can share. Again, I'm not the, I'm not the best. I'm not the worst. I'm just Nelson. I'm more a student of life. And um, I think the more I become older, the more I know that I don't know. And I look and see amazing grappling, amazing Muay Thai. Ah, I wish I have less 10, 15 years now. <laughs> and well, so anyway, well, thank brother, you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank I you. Really no, I, I, really, I really do appreciate it. And um, for my listeners, thanks again. Subscribe to the YouTube channel and um hit like and share with your friends and if you have any questions about it just go in the comments and feel free to comment and i'll catch you all next time peace <laughs>